How are you guys this morning? Welcome to church. Wow, some of you are so excited to be here. Hallelujah. Bonnie is. Woo! Let's stand together as we worship this morning. Yep, you guys come. It is to have our students sitting together, worshiping together. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Encourage them. And our student on the stage this morning. Say hello to Jericho. Hello. hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We have a new memory scripture. And all the words are there. It's going to be easy. <laughs> Revelation 3.20. Would you guys read it with me? 
Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Revelation 3.20. What a wonderful promise from our Lord. Amen. Let's read it one more time. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Revelation 3.20. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this beautiful morning you've blessed us with, Lord. We just, Lord, we thank you for this church family. This, Lord, as we, in first service, heard the sermon you gave Pastor Mike, Lord, as, as I said, the second service just as good. Let soften hearts, Lord. Let you come into to hearts that, Lord, we know we need you. We love you. You are our Savior, Lord. We thank you for everything you do in our lives every day continue to do every day. I say this thing in your name. Amen. Who tells the sun to rise every morning colors the sky with the shades of his glory wakes us with mercy and love Jesus does Who holds the Comforts the widow, cries for injustice, and feels every sorrow, carries the pain of his children, Jesus does. So we sing praise to the Father who gave us the Son, praise to the Spirit who's living in us when I was a sinner. Save me from who
song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us, and all who will believe, will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your day is the highest, your day is the greatest, your
the thrones and dominions of powers and positions your name stands above them all sing it again church your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all there's just something about the name of jesus isn't there logan you got a good name but there's no power behind your name like in the name of jesus amen Connie, you have a great name, solid name, but no power behind it like there is the name of Jesus, right? Crystal, what a great name. Spelled so many different ways, but no power in it like in the name of Jesus. Amen? 1 John 2.12 says, I'm writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of His name. John 20, 31 says, But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And by that believing, you may have life in His name. Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. And Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that's above every other name. That at his name, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. His name, amen, Nothing can stand against His name. Whatever you were walking through last week, maybe it's still plaguing you this week. Maybe there's things coming at you next week and you know they're coming. Nothing can stand against that in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we take heart in that. We stand firm in that. And we declare the name of Jesus. Can you say His name this morning? There's just something about that name. Amen?
with strength and majesty and wisdom beyond measure oh he's the gracious king of never tire singing the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Would you 
say his name this morning. Jesus. 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 Stephanie, would you finish this? Don't take your name lightly. We thank you, Lord, for, for the power of the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for, for Elohim, God exceedingly all. God exceedingly all. Lord, you're Jesus. You're the only reason we are here. You're the only reason why we worship. You're the only reason why we breathe and live. And we thank you, Lord, for in that name. We can call upon the name of our Father and say, Abba. In the name of Jesus. We can pray and ask for healing, comfort, restoration, deliverance, breakthrough in our lives, oh God. And Lord, in that name, we believe that there is hope more than the things that we can see here on earth and that in that name in your name Jesus we will able we will be able to celebrate you and you are the only one that we are looking forward to after this life here on earth Lord, we just we just want to thank you, God, for your presence, for your unending presence, your unending grace, and we do not take it lightly like right now. And individually, Lord, individually, we just want to express to you our gratitude, our worship. And there's no words, no enough words to express how how thankful we are for that powerful, wonderful name of Jesus. Jesus, our mighty warrior. Jesus, our savior. Jesus, our king. Our master, our Lord. Jesus. Jesus, we love you. In Jesus, we praise you. We praise your name. We praise your name, Jesus. We praise your name. We praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. As you're being seated, let me ask a couple of questions. Have you ever been at the bottom of the barrel? Have you ever felt like you were as low as you could go and there was no hope for you in your life? Have you ever been there? Come on, talk to me. You ever felt like there was no hope? You ever been there? Have you ever felt like life was like a, a, an ocean and the water was up to here? Look right here. The water was up to here for you. You ever felt like that in life? Life was like an ocean and water was right there. Anybody? Am I the only one? I, you guys are sitting still. You got to talk to me. Nod your head at least. Look like the little thing on the dash of your car, all right? There, there's bing, bing, bing. Have you ever been doggy paddling so hard 
that you felt like you were going to cramp up and just go all the way under the water? You ever felt like that? You're going to hear a story from a man named Jerry Garcia. Jerry's one of us. He's one of the usins, all right? He's one of us, first member of First Baptist Church Aztec. You're going to hear his God story. You're going to hear from Jerry that he was there. He was there. He had given up on life, and then Jesus moved. Would you watch this story with me? So my name is Jerry Garcia. On July 31st, 2019, I was on my way home from work, and I get a call. And my son was in an accident. I need to get to the hospital. I had to identify his body. And I watched my family die. I was crushed. My everything. And then three days later, I come home from work and I took a letter from my wife of 32 years. She couldn't, couldn't handle it and she ended up leaving me. And then a week later, I get a call from my boss. Jerry, the virus, I work in the hotel industry, so they had to shut the hotel down because of the virus. At this point, I was so devastated. I didn't want to be awake. I did everything I could to stay asleep, alcohol, drugs. They all became my best friend. <clears throat> Finally, I decided I didn't, want to, I didn't want to live anymore, but I didn't want to do it there. I didn't want my only living son to see that. So me and my dog sold everything jumped in the car and left. Traveling the country, we went to New York, Miami, Tennessee. We traveled everywhere. And for some reason, somehow or another, we ended up <laughs> here in a little small town, Aztec. And finally, this was the place. This is the place that was gonna happen. I got on my four-wheeler, rode out to the desert, put that 45 in my mouth, and God just tugged in my heart. Reminded me of my dog. Stupid, but my dog. <sighs> Pulled the bullet out of the chamber. Went back home. And somehow that week, I ended up coming to this church here. And uh, I met with Pastor, but I was ready. I'm from the East Coast. I've been let down. I've been hurt. Didn't want nothing to do with nothing. I hated God. I couldn't stand him. <clears throat> you know, but Pastor, he didn't care. He's like, I'm going to ride this out with you. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, sure, sure you are. He's like, yeah, you know, we talked and steadily I said, I'm sold out. That's it. If I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail because of God, not because of me. And I sold out everything and I put in the work. And steadily but surely, I started getting my happy back. The happy that I never thought I'd have. As I did the work and sought God and prayed with the pastor, everything that I lost, started coming back. I got the job of my dreams. I'm a chief engineer of six hotels. I just started my own business. The happy is coming back. I met the lady of my dreams. Everything that I thought the world took from me. Uh, everything. I had nothing left. But God, he, He's a God of restoration. Everything that I lost. He's give me back, and it's even better and stronger. And uh, I look forward to waking up at two o'clock every morning just so I can thank God, just so I can have my alone time with God. Uh, I'll never get my son back, but in reality, he was never really mine. He was on loan to, from God to me to take care of, and it was time for him to go home. One day, I'll see him again. But right now, I got work to do here, and man. Like I said, every morning, God's blessing me with something or another. And it's not because of me or what I am. That's not me seeking Him. Seek first the kingdom of his, heaven and His righteousness. Everything else, it's just natural. <sighs> every day I wake up wanting to lean into it. There is no more leaning. I wake up, and it's just there. It's just happy. It's just joy. I'm looking forward to, to my tomorrows, and that's my God story. I appreciate Jerry being so transparent, don't you? 
I love that. Are you a Jerry Garcia today? Is that where you are? If you're watching online, is that, is that where you are? Are you there today? If you are, there's hope. There's hope. Um, turn with me, if you would, to Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. While you're finding that, let me, let me just say thank you to John Clark uh, for preaching last Sunday, preaching about the story of Esther. Wow. I, I've, I haven't got to watch it yet. I'm going to, but wow, I've heard so much positive comments uh, that God really spoke through John. And, and we, we had guests that were here, a lot of guests here last week that, that actually have communicated with me and with others how they came just, it was their first Sunday here, but God had that message for them lined up. And so John Clark did a fantastic job. Um, I so appreciate the people that God continues to give spiritual gifts to and raise up around us. Don't you? Isn't that awesome? I appreciate Deborah and her leadership and John and, and the host of others that filled in here and there and did that and this. Um, where I was was Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, it was cloudy the entire time I was out there, I think. It was just, it was just overcast, cloudy. Humidity was high, but it was, it was, it's a beautiful area. I've been, been out there before. Um, in New Mexico, just to let you know why I was out there in Nashville, um, in, in the state of New Mexico, there's one representative that has the privilege of serving on the Lifeway Board of Directors, and that would be yours truly. Um, I, was, I was picked, I was chosen, my name was put in, blah, 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 whatever. And um, it, the Lifeway, Lifeway, our Sunday school literature, if you'll notice, it often has Lifeway's name on it. Uh, uh, discipleship material like Experiencing God is produced by Lifeway, Master Life, a host of other Bible studies. Some of you I've seen have the Tony Evans Study Bible the Christian Standard Bible, the CSB, all of that's Lifeway. Lifeway is an international Christian business, but it's actually a part of the Southern Baptist Convention. It's an entity. Lifeway is an entity of the Southern Baptist Convention. And so uh, your pastor gets to serve the Southern Baptist Convention by serving on the board of directors of Lifeway for a bit. And so I really appreciate that opportunity uh, loaded up on the plane last Sunday morning at 6.30 a.m. and stepped off the plane on Tuesday night, uh, right about midnight at Durango, got in right about, you know, uh, after one, and it was fun. But I came back encouraged, uh, inspired, around some real quality leaders out there, high-caliber leaders that I got to sit with and and listen to, got some great worship experiences out there. I came back refreshed and encouraged, church. So thank you for the time away. It is really, really appreciated. Thank you. Uh, Colossians chapter 2. Man, I gave you plenty of time. I hope you found it. If you got it, say, I got it. Got it. All right. If not, give up and look on with someone else. You're all right. All right. Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. We're going to read the Word of God. And don't, don't read faster than I do. Stay with me, please. Chapter 2, verse 1. Paul says, I, I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of of complete understanding, in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, hallelujah, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The title of our message this morning is Encouraged in Heart and United in Love. Do you see that in the passage we just read? Do you see that phrase? Encouraged in heart and united in love. Let's pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word, the Bible. God, thank you that your Holy Spirit takes it and opens it up for us and speaks to us. And Father, we ask you would do that right now. The people watching online, the people that are here, God, open your word, penetrate our hearts, and speak to us. 
that each of us would leave different than what we entered. God, we thank you for the story of Jerry Garcia. There's others in this room that could tell similar stories. God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for hope. Thank you for healing. Thank you, Father. You are such an awesome and great God. Now speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Apostle Paul starts out here in the text, Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. He says, he's writing to the church of Colossae, and he says, I want you, the church, to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at Laodicea and for those who have not yet met me personally. Wow. The Apostle Paul says, I want you to know how hard I am contending for you, how hard I'm striving for you, how hard I am standing in the gap for you. Do others, now, now let, let me ask you a couple questions, all right? Don't answer these questions out loud. Rhetorical questions, embrace them, process them, think, think about them. Don't answer out loud right now. Do others in the life of the church know that you are contending for them? Do others in the life of the church think you are against them? Say, well, how, how can they know the difference, whether we're for them or whether they're against them? I'm just silent. I don't say anything to them at all. Well, sometimes silence can be our greatest adversary. Silence can be our greatest enemy. Because in our own minds, we do all the talking, Right? And when people aren't breathing life into us, where do we automatically go to, the positive or the negative? Talk to me. Exactly. Do people in the life of the church know that you're contending for them, that you are, that you are striving for them? Do, do people in the life of First Baptist Church, Aztec, or maybe even at work or at school, do they know that they are not alone in their walk? Do they know they're not alone in their life journey? If you are around them, if God has placed you into their lives, even if it's sitting in a class at school or a cubicle at work next to them, you have been placed in their life, not by an accident. God is too big for accidents, all right? Amen? God in His sovereignty has placed you in people's lives, both in church and in your everyday life, and you have a responsibility to walk with people in their life journey. I heard somewhere once that ministry is dirty. You ever heard that? And you may be processing some people both here at church or in your own personal life at work or, 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 or playing sports or wherever you go, and you're like, well, pastor, I don't want to walk with them. They're yucky. Well, we need to set our pride aside, don't we? Do the people around you feel alone. You said, well, I'm sitting next, to, sitting next to them. They don't feel alone. I'm right here with them. My friends, you could be in the room of a thousand people and still feel alone and isolated. Did you know that? You can be amongst all sorts of people and still feel alone. Some of you have it because you're, you're, you're letting me know that right now. I, I can see it. How would people know the difference between being alone and knowing that you are walking with them? How would people know that? How, how do they come to that conclusion, whether they are alone or that you, a child of God, is walking with them? Well, if we open our mouths and tell them is one way, right? 
We open our mouths and we go, hey, I'm, I'm here with you. I know life is stinky right now, but I'm with you. That's one way, is it not? You, you know, praying with people is another way. To, to contend. Just like Paul says, I am contending with you. The churches would have not known that if he had not written it and sent it in a letter. This kind of stuff doesn't get to us by osmosis. He told them, but another way is by you and I knowing maybe somebody's walking through some junk and we walk up to them and we say, hey, I hear you're going through some junk. Can I pray with you? And it doesn't matter where they are, at work, at school, on the sports field, in, in, in Walmart, Safeway, a dollar store, a convenience store. Did you realize, shock, are you ready for shock? Say, I am. You can pray with people anywhere you are. That's a shock. Take a deep breath. You'll be okay. You can pray with, I know it's cynicism, but it's okay. It's a spiritual gift. You guys can pray with, and when you pray with someone, you begin contending for them. Paul says, I contend for the church of Colossae. I, I contend for the church of Laodicea. And I contend for people who I haven't even met yet. I'm standing for them. We can tell them, we can pray for them. We can encourage them with our words or with our presence in their life journey. Jerry's story. Jerry's story. Did you guys hear Jerry's story? Say yes or no. Jerry's story. I can't tell you how many cousins I took from him. Jerry, if you're watching, I, I love you. You say, you're a pastor and you took a cussing from someone? Oh, my lands, if you guys only knew. If you only knew. School principals don't have anything on me. I'm just saying. It's nothing. <laughs> we can compare notes sometimes, guys. I'm just saying. It's... Yeah, and that doesn't give you permission, by the way. No, I'm not giving you permission. No. No. Don't, don't go there. But Jerry wanted to isolate himself away from God. He lost his son, tragic accident. It was a, uh, a, a four-wheeler ATV type accident. Lost his wife, divorce. Lost his job. And he started off in Maine. Draw a straight line from Maine to Aztec, would you? What are the odds of Jerry Garcia ending up from Maine to Aztec, New Mexico. 100, 100% with God. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because at First Baptist Church Aztec, he found a pastor that would take a custom from him and love him right where he was and pray for him. You know, Jerry's gone to Bible school. He's gone to Bible school. He knows a lot of theology. He knows a lot of doctrine. He was running from God. Because why? Death of a child. Wife left him. Lost his job. There's other pieces to that. There was the church failed him. The church failed him as well. Lots of stuff that he didn't mention. And he was mad. Do you know anyone that's mad at God? I hope that you don't shun them. If you know someone that's mad at God, I hope you love on them. I hope you take this word right here and that you contend for them. That you pray for them. You tell them you're walking with them. That you show up and walk in their journey right where they are. You know, I've had several people, as, as a pastor, I've had several people say, Hey, pastor, thanks for checking on me. It means so much. 
a phone call, a text message, a visit. Some have even said this to me. I really was beginning to wonder if anybody even cared. Now, wait a minute. If someone, a member of First Baptist Church Aztec is missing from church and they tell their pastor, I was beginning to wonder if anybody even cared, we may have some repenting to do as a church. Hello? I... I, Amen, Pastor. (laughs) That's going to get tiring in a minute, I'll just tell you. If someone is not here, whether we know it, we know their reason or not, they need loved on. Amen? We need to contend for them. We need to fight for them. We need to stand in the gap for them. Now, yeah, I understand it may be, well, they could have reached out to us. It doesn't matter. If you and I begin pointing fingers at someone else that's in need, we, need, we have some more repenting to do. Because our pride has overridden our spiritual life. Our pride has overridden the Jesus that lives in us. If we're making excuses and pointing the finger at someone that's hurting, going, well, they should have let us know. Come on, Really? I mean, there are some points, yeah, I get that, but still, guys, really? There is enough of us, usins, here at First Baptist Church Aztec that we should reach out to others and stand in the gap, and that gap would begin to close. Daniel, would you throw a slide up there for me, please? This word gap, it speaks to me. If we're going to contend for someone, we're going to stand in the gap for them, God and people, and we're going to try to shut the distance between God and people by contending for them. That means you and I are standing in between them and God, praying for them, interceding for them if you can, loving on them, being Jesus for them, just like Jerry Garcia, who pushed me away as hard as anybody has ever pushed me away. And yet I call him a friend today. God and people. Would you and I begin to take on like what the Apostle Paul says? I want you to know how hard I am contending, striving, praying, standing in the gap for you. Would you and I be that type of person? You you, you and I have that responsibility to reach out to others. You, You and I have that responsibility to contend spiritually for other people, to pray for them, to encourage them, to love them, to stand in the gap for them. Have you ever needed someone to stand in the gap for you? You ever needed, you ever been at a spot where you needed someone to contend for you? Or have you always been that superhero? All of us have been there at some point. I, I want you to hold the place in Colossians because we're coming back, but I want you to go to the book of Psalms. Take your Bibles and go to the book of Psalms, please. Psalm chapter 69. And as only the Spirit of God can do it, this Psalm 69 was part of my everyday Bible reading on Friday. And Brian Sanders and I are reading, he's one, one of the people I'm doing a Bible reading with, and this was part of our normal reading of Scripture, Psalm 69, and man, did God make this jump off the page at me through the power of his spirit and apply it to this morning's message. Now, don't read ahead of me when you get there. When you get there, just say, I got it. Don't, don't read ahead of me. It's not polite. All right, here we go. Psalm 69, verse 1. Look at what King David, everybody say King David. David. Look at what King David wrote. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up 
to my neck. Now wait, looky here, looky here. Where's the waters at? This is King David. King David, a man after God's own heart. King David, one of the greatest warriors. One of the greatest warriors to ever live. King David says, God, help me. Save me. I'm up to here. Wow. Are are you there? Are you there today? Are, are, are Are you up to here? You feel like you're drowning? King David said, God, I'm up to here. Save me, O God, from the waters that have come up to my neck. I sink into the miry depths where there is no foothold. You know what comes to my mind? The word picture that comes to my mind right there uh, is is doggy paddling. my, My knees are kicking. My knees are coming all the way up. My feet are going like crazy. And my hands are doing this. And and it's like I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. God, I'm just trying to get a foothold. I'm just trying to find my footing. God, I'm exhausted. You ever been there? Are you there today? Jerry Jerry told a story about when he was there. He said, I I feel like I can't. One of his phrases was, I didn't want to wake up. You ever been there? Do you have someone like that in your life? What else does he say? He says, I I have come, second half of verse 2, I have come into the deep waters. The floods engulf me. Now, hang on just a second, right here. Don't, Don't keep reading, right here. If, if you see some really cute preschoolers, just assume they're my grandchildren, all right? I'm just saying. Just assume, because I got the cutest grandkids there are on the face of the earth. Most of them are preschoolers, so there you go. Safe assumption. The, the family down in Houston, they have a swimming pool, and their swimming pool goes down to nine feet. It goes nine feet on the deep end and is shallow on the other end, right? Why do my daughter and her husband always tell their children their preschool children to stay on the shallow end of the pool. Why is that? Yeah. Yeah. You you go to the deep end, it's a little more scary down there, isn't it? What's, What's David saying right here about the deep end of the pool? What's he saying? I have come into the deep waters. The floods engulf me. He says, God, I can't touch bottom. God, I can't touch bottom. I feel like I'm drowning. Verse 3 says, I I am worn out calling for help. My throat is parched. You know, when Jerry Jerry Garcia, don't, don't keep reading, come right up here. When Jerry Garcia first came into the office, he came in and, man, he was spitting nails. You guys know that expression? He was spitting nails. Man, he, he was just... You don't know that expression? He, he was so mad, he'd just take metal and chew it up and just spit out nails. At, just boom, 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 boom. That's how mad he was. He came in cussing, trying to intimidate me. I don't get intimidated real easily, just FYI. It's not the way I'm wired. And he sat in my office, and he denied God, and he said, your God isn't real, your God isn't true, and this church is just like every other church. You know what I wanted to ask, but I didn't. But in my flesh, I wanted to say, then why are you in my office? Why, Why are you sitting here talking to me? But I didn't. I didn't. I just listened. Because deep inside, Jerry knew truth. Deep inside, Jerry knew truth. His life had been turned upside down. And where he was, he was blaming God for all of his hurt. And he thought, if I can just distance myself away from God as much as possible, and yet the Spirit of God in him continued to draw him back to the Father. 
and he hated it. Ever been there? Ever been there? You know anybody that's ever been there? Would you believe that there's probably people that you work with that are there today? Would you believe there's probably people that you sit in school with and class with that are there today? They may believe that there's a God, but, but they're so mad at Him because they feel like they have been hurt. And they've called out to Him, just like it says in verse 3. They've called out to Him, and they've called out to Him, and they've called out to Him, and the pain is still there. <laughs> The pain won't leave. Their throat is parched. That's what it says. And he says, my eyes fell looking for my God. King David wrote that. It sounds like King David needed someone to stand in the gap for him, does it not? You may need someone to stand in the gap for you today. Or maybe God has already brought into your mind someone that you are supposed to stand in the gap for. That person that's been treating you so mean at work, maybe they're the ones that need it the most. That person that, 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 that at school that just drives you crazy because anytime you wear a Christian shirt, all they have is bad things to say, maybe they need you to stand in the gap for them more than anyone. Turn with me, if you would, to the book of Corinthians. I, we're going to look at one other passage here. Second Corinthians, if you would. It's on the other end. It goes The, the Bible in the New Testament goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Uh, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians. I want you to go to 2nd Corinthians, chapter 1. Let me tell you about something that happened this last Friday while you're finding that in your Bible. This last Friday, sitting right here where some of you are seated today, was a family and some friends. They were here at First Baptist Church Aztec because they had a three and a half week old baby die. SIDS death, sudden infant death syndrome. They were sitting right here. Probably sounding a lot like Psalm 69. Does that make sense? But how they ended up here, they didn't really have a church home at all. And so one of you, one of you, Charlotte Red, is a neighbor of this family. And Charlotte knew of the death of this three and a half week old baby. And she reached out to the family and loved on them and prayed for them and said, do you need a church? Do you need a pastor? You can have ours. Now, don't always throw me under the bus like that, okay? It's... <laughs> no, you can. It's okay. And Charlotte got them and us together, Paulette Heiss, and I met with them. Paulette's the point person for our funeral ministry, among other things. And we hugged on them and we loved on them. And several of you were here on Friday to love on that family, to hug on them. Several of you brought food for the funeral meal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing food for a funeral meal. A family who's just lost a three and a half week old baby. They have a, I think it's a 13 month old little girl cutest little blue jeans on Sunday, or I'm sorry, Friday, uh, and they have a, about a four-year-old son sitting right here with them, not understanding 
but they were being loved on by you, the church. Through your presence, through your prayers, through your food, and through just keeping the utilities on, right? Things that people don't think of. The cleanliness of the church, the cleanliness of the yard, the, the bringing of the meals, the cleaning of the bathrooms, the, the picking up of trash and carrying the, all that has to happen for stuff like that to happen. And listen, hear me, Paulette and I and me and others, we, we, we talk with people like this all the time that I never take the time to share with you guys on a Sunday morning, and you have no idea this happens. It happens and it rolls out, it happens and it rolls out, and you guys don't ever hear about it, but I'm sharing with you today because it ties in so beautifully with the message that you and I have the responsibility to contend for people, people we know and people we have not yet met, just as Paul said. But I also want you to see this in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. If you got it, say, I got it. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, watch this, the Father of all compassion. That means He created compassion. He fathered it. He created it. He's the Father of all compassion and the God, the Creator, again, of all comfort. And watch verse 4. Who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from who, church? And oftentimes, how do we receive the comfort of God? As you and I stand in the gap for others, God and people. Some of our folks that were here folded up tables and carried them from point A to point B. Some picked up flowers and carried them from point A to point B. Like I said, some of you made meals or desserts, hallelujah, and you brought those in for the family and, 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 and those that were serving, and you ministered to them. You stood in the gap for them. You contended for them. And with the comfort and compassion that they received here, not even being members of a church, you showed them comfort and compassion that they will not quickly forget. But what's Paul's goal? What's Paul's goal with contending? What's Paul's goal with contending for people that he knows and he doesn't know? Look at verse 2 of Colossians chapter 2. Go back to our text, Colossians 2, verse 2. What's a goal here? What should our goal be? Look at it, verse 2. My goal, Paul says, and this should be ours, is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in in love, encouraged in heart, and united in love. Let's camp there for just one quick second. That people would be encouraged in heart. Okay, break it down. The heart is the center of the will. That they would be encouraged in the core of who they are. The Greek word for the word encouraged is parakleo, parakleo. And what it literally means is to Call, come alongside. It literally means to come alongside. To, for people to be encouraged in heart. For people to have others come alongside them in the core of who they are. Someone to walk alongside you. And then he says to be united in love. This is our goal. To be encouraged in heart. To have people come alongside you and encourage you in the center of who you are, and to be united in love. That word united is literally in the Greek to be knit together, K-N-I-T, to be knit or sewn together, to be bonded together in what? In love, agape love, that deep brotherly love. Paul says that's the goal. 
for people he knows in the church, the Colossae church, the Laodicea church, and others he has not yet met. That should be our goal, should it not? For people to be encouraged in heart as we contend for them, as we stand in the gap for them. To be encouraged in heart and united in love. But he doesn't stop there. It gets gooder. Look at it. Good is a word. Get off of me. All right, here it goes. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love. Look, so that they may have the full riches, hallelujah, of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. There it is. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All of this, the contending, the prayer, the walking with people, the, the, the standing in the gap for people, the, the praying for people, all of that, the, the be making people feel encouraged in heart and united in love. What's the purpose of all of it? That they can know Jesus. That's what it says. So that they can know Christ. Because that's a core of who the church is. Because if people know Jesus, they will better understand all the hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge. <coughs> Jerry Garcia, in Bible school up in Maine, had surrendered to the ministry, active in his church. Church turned his back on him. His wife left him. His son died. Lost his job. He needed someone to contend for him, did he not? Not to give up on him. Even though he's like a scared dog, you go down to. You ever tried to pet a scared dog? Yeah. Make sure your fingers aren't sticking out, right? Make sure it's the fist. It, it hurts a little worse or a little, little less. Just like a scared dog, you, you reach out to, to pet Jerry back then and he would just bite. Love you, Jerry. If you're watching, I love you. You know I do, brother. But he would just bite. But I kept reaching back and reaching back and reaching back and reaching back. Did I get bit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got bit. But look at where he is today. Sharing this God story with you. A new man. Does he still have hurts? Yes. The anniversary of his son's death has come and gone, and he's still ripped out about it. He's hurting. He's grieving. Who wouldn't be grieving, right? My friends, when you and I allow ourselves to fill in the gap, to stand between God and people, to intercede, when you and I allow ourselves to fill in the gap, people will come to see Christ in a deeper way. They can come to understand the deepness of the love of God that God has for them. This, okay, here, here. Are you ready for another shocker? You guys ready for me to drop something on you really deep that you've never heard before? Are you ready? Say yes. Yes, it's cynicism. Whoever laughed, yes, it's coming. Yes, it's coming. Yes, ma'am. Come on, one more time. If you're ready, say I am. This doesn't happen when we stand in judgment and condemnation of people. When we stand in judgment and condemnation of people, we're not standing in the gap for them. We're standing in judgment and condemnation. There's a difference. 
But when we do stand in the gap and we see people coming to understand the deepness of the love of God and the riches of the love of God and what Christ has done for them, that happens when you and I live out grace, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the same grace and the same mercy that was extended to you a sinner, and the love of God. And when we come alongside them, when we, when we come alongside them and we encourage them and we are united in love with them, that's when hope is discovered. I wear on my wrist, and by the fact, you, you can have one of these as well if you'd like. I, we, we've got plenty around here. A little rubber band, little rubber band bracelet thingy here. On one side, it says, hashtag FBC Aztec. First Baptist Church Aztec. And then it gives three words, hope, healing, and home. And I believe these three verses that we just looked at is the epitome of what we're seeing right here in this bracelet. A place that people can discover hope, which is Jesus. A place that people can discover healing, emotional, mental, physical, spiritual, sexual, financial healing. Healing. Do you, are you here today? Do you need hope? Are you here today? Do you need healing? You need healing in one of these ways? Jesus is ready to provide you hope. All you've got to do is surrender your life to Him. Jesus is ready to provide you healing. It may take immediate effect. It may take days and weeks. I don't know. I'm not God. He is. But it all begins when we surrender and say, I want hope. I want healing. And that last part, home, a church to call home. The Apostle Paul says, I, I am contending for you. And the folks in Laodicea and the ones I have not yet met. Okay, Christians. Who are you contending for? Who are you standing in the gap for? You see, it doesn't matter your age. If you're a follower of Christ, you have a responsibility. Stand in the gap. God and people. The and is you. You're right there. You're bringing the two together so that people can be what? United, encouraged in heart, and united in love. And they can come to know Jesus. Who are you standing in the gap for? Who are you contending for? Or do you need someone to stand in the gap for you? I'm going to have some people standing right here to my left and right here to my right. They do not stand up here in judgment or condemnation. If they were judging and condemn, condemning people, they wouldn't be up here. Fair enough? They will accept you right where you are. I'm going to be right here in the middle. Dude, there's no judgment or condemnation from me, I promise. I'm the chief imperfection officer of First Baptist Church, Aztec. I make sure I stay screwed up. And according to the personnel team, I'm doing a good job at it. You can come up to one of these people, right? Standing on my left or my right. And they will receive you with open arms. They will receive you with love. Not judgment, not condemnation. They will stand in the gap for you. They will contend for you, as will I, right here. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Father in heaven... You're such a good and gracious God. Thank you that you empower us through your Holy Spirit to contend for others, to stand in the gap for others, to pray for others, to accept people where they are and lead them to where they need to be in your kingdom. 
God, to see that people are encouraged in heart and united in love, to, to be knit together through the love of Christ, whether they deserve it at that moment or not, in our eyes. To come alongside people. So, Father, speak to us. If there's someone that needs that gap to be filled in their lives, oh, Lord, I pray that happens in their lives today. If there's someone that that goes, I, I've been ignoring this person at work, I've been ignoring this person at school, I've been ignoring this person in my neighborhood or my sports team because they are so hurt, all they want to do is hurt others. Father, that person needs to be stood in the gap for. And you've placed them in our lives. May we step up to the call. God, if there's someone here that needs to discover Jesus today, I pray they come quickly. And just simply utter those words, I need Jesus. Someone that needs healing, God, I pray they come. Someone that needs a church home, Lord, I pray they come. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me? And as you stand, would you come, please? In Jesus' name, come. Miss Deborah. like this song says so very clearly we have to make room for you set aside our pride set aside our arrogance and come alongside to contend to encourage to unite all for the purpose of Jesus Christ. So Father, may each of us make room. And God, show us, reveal to us. You didn't, God, Father, you didn't bring this message by happenstance or coincidence. You brought it for a person. 
maybe a person that's not even here that we work with, that we go to school with, that we know. And God, you are calling us. You're tapping us on the shoulder. You're flicking us on the head. You're telling us. Go encourage them. Come alongside them. Unite in love with them. They need my son, Jesus. So thank you, Father, that it all begins with contending. It all begins with prayer. It all begins. So may we do spiritual battle for those that you've placed in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would have a seat and enjoy these uh, video announcements. Good morning, friends. Thank you for making worship a priority in your life. I hope you've enjoyed your worship experience with us this morning. My name is Katie, and it is my pleasure to share with you a few things I think you may want to take part in. Dr. Phil Sylvia will be here presenting The Destruction of Sodom on Sunday, September the 10th at 5.30 p.m. Dr. Sylvia will speak about the evidence for the destruction of Sodom, as well as what the Bible has to say about its destruction and why it is important for enhancing our confidence in the trustworthiness of the biblical text. Good morning and a good Oklahoma howdy to all of you folks at First Baptist Church in Aztec, New Mexico. I want to begin by saying thank you so much for your hospitality from last year. Uh, it was a highlight for the rest of the year for me and I appreciate it so much. And I'm really looking forward to being back with you again this October. I want you to be thinking about something until then. Number one, the Garden of Eden, the Ark of Noah, the calling of Abraham, Moses into the wilderness, the cross of Jesus Christ, the resurrection, were all for one purpose. That was to create for God a people that he could love and they could love back in loving service. When you come under a kingdom, there's always a king. We're gonna be talking about kingdom power and kingdom presence. And when you come into God's family, you step into a new kingdom where Jesus is king. And as a king, like a good father, will lead you into all the blessing that he has in store, just tailor-made for your life. And I'm looking forward to being with you then. God bless you and pray that I get there safe. The Women's Ministry invites all women to a women's retreat on October 20th and 21st at Biasudo Lake Event Center for a time of fellowship, love, friendship, and for the renewing of love for Jesus. Lodging is at the Bear Paw Lodge. The cost is $50 with lodging and $20 without. See Crystal in the office or scan the QR code on the sign-up board to reserve your spot. During BBS this summer, you were a part of sending farm animals to families in third world countries. Send Relief President Bryant Wright sent a video expressing his appreciation for your generosity. Bryant refers to chickens as an example, but we sent chickens, cows, rabbits, pigs, goats, and more. And by the way, if you were part of the pig chase um, during VBS or heard about it, you know that it was serious business. Things happened because we showed the kids examples of the animals. That's not the point. Enjoy this word from Bryant. Thank you, First Baptist Church Aztec, for raising money for Send Relief during Vacation Bible School. Your gifts are making a huge difference all around the world. For example, in one part of Africa, your gifts are helping provide chickens to families in need who normally do not have access to consistent food or income. Because of your VBS gifts, we're able to help them. Sin Relief trains these families to raise chickens so they can sell them at the local market and make money to buy clothes, food, and other important necessities. But the most important thing is that we're also teaching these families more about Jesus. And when they sell their chickens at the markets, they can tell people in their community about Jesus. Please pray for those families with us, that they would be encouraged in their faith because of this project. Pray they would be bold to tell their neighbors about Jesus. So thank you again, First Baptist Aztec. You are provided chickens and more all around the world through your generosity. Trunk or Treat is coming soon. We need you to sign up to decorate the back of your vehicle with a Christian theme and hand out candy. We also need candy. Please bring bags of candy now through October 30th. 
There is a sign-up sheet on the sign-up board if you would like to participate. And I can just tell you right now, so many people come to this evangelistic event. They hear about Jesus. They get to talk to believers. And they eat candy like crazy. So <laughs> bring candy. I'm so glad you decided to spend your Sunday morning with us. We believe First Baptist Aztec is a place for you to find hope, healing, and a church to call home. If this is your first time here, Pastor Mike would like to meet you outside the north doorway where you will receive your favorite soda, candy bar, and a gift. Thanks again for worshiping the Lord with us today. And guests, welcome home. All right, my friends. So it is almost fall, not quite, but we're almost there. So excited. I've even seen yellow leaves on the trees. And I'm so ready for it because it's my favorite time of year. So I have some fall jokes to kind of start us out. Again, even though we're not there. But we're close. So here we go. Why did the turkey cross the road? Because it was the chicken's day off. Hello. Why did the apple pie go to the dentist? Because it needed a filling. Okay, I've got one more joke for you guys. Why shouldn't you tell a secret in a cornfield? Because the corn has ears. Get it, ears of corn. Ears. Come on. All right, y'all. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you, Miss Katie, for doing that. I appreciate it so much. Um, you've got these flyers. This says Kingdom Power. You've got these little uh, cards right here as well. They're located all around the church. You can take these and hang these up at your work, at a place you work out at. You go to a gym. You can hang this up at your gym. Uh, take these handies out to people that you know or people you don't know, invite them to come. You, some of you guys remember Danny Lynchard. He was here with us just last year, and I don't normally bring people back this quickly. Um, but wow, after praying and, and just processing, Danny's the right man to come back this October. His teaching is phenomenal. Um, got lunches, lunches scheduled Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So there's a lunch time, and he'll be teaching as well as in the evening as well. So Invite some people to come with you, that they will thank you for the invitation if they come, all right? So I appreciate that. Stand up with me if you would, please. If you can't find these flyers and you want to know where they are, ask somebody else and they should be able to direct you straight to them because they are all over the church, all right? You need me? Nice. Nice. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Miss Gina. I appreciate that. All right. Um, we're going to pray. As we pray, we're going to be asking God to bless our tithes and our offerings that we've brought. And so would you pray with me, please? God, thank you for your word. And God, thank you that your word is just so simple. It's so easy. It's just right there. And your Holy Spirit makes it come to life for us. So thank you for the Bible. Now, God, may we be in it every day, uh, digging truths out that you, your Spirit is speaking to us. May each one of us do that. May we be faithful in that and faithful in prayer. And God, may we be faithful to contend, to stand in the gap, to encourage, come alongside others, and to see people united in love, all for the sake of Christ and for them knowing Christ. So, Lord, make it so. Bless our tithes that we brought, um, some online, some uh, in one of the offering boxes. But, God, bless that and bless those that give. Uh, Lord, hold true to your word. Protect our finances as we give back to you, as we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, trusting you to add all the details to our lives. God, thank you for the ability to give in the spirit of generosity that's so rich in this church. In Jesus' name, amen. Guests, I'm going to be right outside this door. Come see me.